and we are live hello everyone and welcome back to the uh, second session of phosphor g 2021 buenos aires i am kodrina elie and i'm going to be chairing a wonderful session on a lot of things related and to we are live mobile apps hello everyone and okay and there we go <laughs> apologies <laughs> Uh, so, um, without any further ado, I am going to introduce to you Andrea Antonello. He is an old friend of mine and one of the important contributors to the phosphor G and to the OSGEO community. He has a lot of wonderful and interesting things to tell you about uh, Smash and Geo Paparazzi. So, um, Andrea, you have the floor. All right. Thank you very much, Kadrina. I really wished my mother was here listening to how you presented me because that was really, really awesome. So I'm going to give you a chat about what Smash and Geoparazzi look like these days. And well, uh, this presentation will start a little bit uh, sad, maybe mostly for me, but also for many users. Uh, we are officially sending Geoparazzi into end of life. Uh, the reason being, uh, well, long, long story short, remember for me, Joe Paparazzi is really like a little kid and I, it was very important to me. And the problem is Smash, the project I will then show you a bit later, has a really rich maturity and is even more feature rich at this point. Development is much, much simpler and faster. And well, the company that supports it cannot support two mobile projects. So at some point we really had to make a choice. So what will we really miss? Uh, well, at the time being, there are just two or three things. One is the 3D view, but I figured that talking to surveyors and whoever uses GeoPaparazzi, well, they were not really using a 3D view. Uh, it was nice and, and, and cool to see, but it's not really used on surveys. And then there is special light. Special light is a quite complex um, project and we had lots of issues uh, to build it for GeoPaparazzi, then GeoPackage geo came, sorry, and that started to be used by everyone. So for mobile purposes, GeoPackage is perfect and we implemented that part and left Spatialite behind on mobile. And then there are translations and GeoPaparazzi was really translated in many, many languages. They take time and they take your involvement. So what do we gain? Uh, first and foremost, a modern GeoPaparazzi. So a new review of the user interface. It's more than slick responsive. It's, in my opinion, really cool. So I had not big problems to step into Smash. We have iOS support, was what that's quite important also. Uh, and it has already shown how many new users it dragged in. And then there are a pile of new features uh, being, for example, common filters. Uh, you can enable filtering in the settings and the, in, in the, at the moment you, you start filtering, you have both uh, the original GPS log and also the filtered one. And you can switch in the main view between uh, the two different logs. And in case you have um, situations where the GPS is uh, bad, the signal is bad, as in this case for uh, two tunnels, you see how filtering, which is on the right, uh, features much, much better. Uh, we have a nice log profile where you can, for each GPS log, you can have a little look. You can tap on this uh, longitude, uh, longitudinal profile and it will show you on the map where you're at. It shows you some uh, some statistics like duration and duration at every point, speed at every point. It's really quite nice to look into it. And then there are log teams, which I really love. Uh, you can team the GPS logs with a color table and it will draw it with a gradient and you will see uh, maybe the, the log color by elevation, by speed, by slope. And you can also see where you have upslope, where you're going uphill or downhill. And then there is something I really love. I don't know how many really will uh, find this extremely useful to surveyors. It's the on-screen log information. When you are uh, 
recording logs. It will show you the duration of your log, uh, the distance, and it will show you a little chart, a graph of the last 100 GPS points in the profile, uh, longitudinal profile. Uh, lockdown brought in fences because where we live, uh, they gave us at a certain point, you can just go walk 200 meters around your flat. So we thought we would add fences where you can just say, okay, create a fence of so many meters of a certain radius, and you can enable ringtones or alarms when you enter or exit the fence. And then this is something that Jim Paparazzi had, but I want to highlight it because Smash brought it finally back, contour lines on the, on the offline maps, the open Android maps, and this is extremely useful to certain types of surveys. So it's a big feature that we got in again. And okay, back to data, uh, the concept changed. If you remember in GeoPaparazzi, GPX files were imported inside the database. Now GPX files, shapefiles, geopackage, box GIS, they are all vector layers you can load in a GIS modus. And all these layers can be styled through SLD, which is a nice or a complex, but a good OGC standard. And they can also be reprojected. Reprojection, how is that done? When you drag in a new layer, if the projection wasn't supported yet, you, it will give you an error, you tap it, and it will connect to the internet and retrieve the information uh, about the projection. So you will then be able to work with it. Also in editing mode, it will do reprojection on the fly. GPX layers, since they have a, always an elevation, well, they can also team with, um, with elevation, slope, uh, and things like that. And this is important because I, for example, use often GPS uh, uh, layers uh, to prepare for a survey to, to walk a path. And that gives you a good idea what I'm going to work. Shape files, same as GPX, they are supported in read-only mode and they can be styled also with a unique value teaming. As you can see here, this looks maybe like a raster file, but is really a shape file of many, many polygons that has been themed uh, uh, with unique values categories. So uh, that's quite cool in my opinion. Shapefile is not really the way to go. Best is Geo package and PostGIS. Those two are uh, supported in read and write mode, even if PostGIS at the time being only in online mode. So you have to be connected to do changes in geometry and uh, table values, alphanumeric values. Also in these cases, you have a user, simple user interface uh, with which you can change the style and uh, select labels and do some styling stuff. Regarding editing, uh, geopackaging post-GIS allow you to select the feature and it will enter in editing mode. You have the nice vertexes, you can drag around, you can add vertexes in the middle or new vertexes by tapping or by putting them in the GPS position. And you can also edit the alphanumeric values that by default are presented just in a tabular mode that you can edit, but GeoPackage and PostGIS now also support the forms mode, that if you are a GeoPaparazzi or Smash user, it is what you usually take the note with. So you take a note, you open your complex or structured form, and this is now possible also for GeoPackage and PostGIS. And I will show you later how you can prepare your forms for these data formats. Rasters. Um, GeoParazzi supported MB tiles and GeoPackage uh, tilings. Uh, we now also support uh, images with world file definitions and geodiffs. Both of these also support projections, but mine because the projections are just uh, a bounding box wrapping, uh, warping. And so on some projections, you will get probably strange results. This is, for example, a JPEG that has been loaded. It's APSG32632. Um, it's in a region where there is not so much distortion. Even if you look at the border, you will see some of the roads have a slight effect. But this would be quite OK. Geotiffs, on the other hand, are a hassle already on desktop. It's a quite complex format, so you don't have to expect really a lot. But 
we have been able to load a lot of orthophotos and even geotiffs uh, technical maps like this that usually are compressed uh, in a brutal way and might give problems. So try it out. Most of the times, anyways, if you have bigger surveys, you are better off with doing tile sets with GeoPackage or MBTiles. This about the specifically Smash device features uh, regarding centralizing surveys. Uh, well, we have the survey server. It's around for a while now, and it has been enhanced with, uh, with Smash a lot. So you have this map with all, all your logs and notes on it. And it gives you the possibility to synchronize stuff, uh, your surveys from Smash directly on the server. Um, team coordinators will also have the possibility to upload data and forms and uh, also projects that then the user in the lower part, you can see it, uh, the Smash users can download. So coordinators can uh, provide data sets and forms uh, for teams of surveyors. One big thing, in my opinion, well, one thing that I really love is that the server now, the, the, the default client for the server visualizes you the nodes if you open them exactly the same way as it does on Smash. So you really find yourself also from a visual point of view. But what I find extremely cool is it supports versioning, which means uh, nodes that are modified uh, but in the same position are identified as being another version of a node. And that means uh, even if the same user, different user with the same project, different project, whatever, uploads, saves and synchronizes a new node at a different time, but in the same position, you will get a versioned node. And that means if you, when you open it at the very bottom, you will see uh, like a uh, previous button. With the previous button, you can browse back in time of your node. And that's quite cool. Uh, I was talking about the full client, and that's because uh, recently, well, we, we have this client where we see the notes very nicely. And recently I talked to uh, Francesco Frasinelli from the Norwegian Institute for Nature Research. And it has been very cool because they have been testing uh, Smash and the server uh, to map alien species. And they made like, around 2000 nodes and they brought the system to the limit because they have uh, nodes that are very large and they surveyed a lot and synchronized them and the, the default client wasn't uh, performing enough in the visualization of these nodes. And what they did was actually very cool. They decided to use a different client and they took just the backbone of the server without any necessary development from our side that we didn't even know it and they attached a different client and it's Apache Superset which is a dashboard application a very very advanced dashboard application an open source project and they got something like this which I find is an extremely cool representation of the Geoparazzi service server so just know that you can access the server in different ways uh, supporting tools very important, excuse me, I'm very fast because there's a lot of stuff to show and very, very short time. Supporting tools are necessary when you do this kind of stuff because you have to prepare data, you have to analyze data to look at data. We supply a tool in the Horde machine, a couple of tools. Uh, Horde machine, I leave you to that. It's just something you can download and start up. It has, it has executables for Windows, Mac and Linux. And with it, you can prepare data like MB tiles. So this is a module where you just add your data set and it will generate an MB tiles database. You can then run up into your device. Then you can also take a folder of shape files and it will create a geo package out of it. If you style them with SLD, QGIS, for example, also supports uh, exporting to SLD the style. If you use that, it will generate your job package styled ready for Smash. There is another tool, the DB Viewer. It's a simple tool to visualize uh, spatial databases like GeoPackage A2G, 
H to GIS and post GIS. And with that, you can create a new geo package and it will be empty. And you can just right click and say, well, uh, create me a table from a shape file. It will take the schema. It will ask you if you want to change the name, if you want to change the projection and it will create a table with it. And once you have the table, you can just import the data into the shape file. And it is visualized, as you can see, the, you click on the table and you will see the content, you see the geometries, you see whatever you need to see. And if you right click and need to style them, there will be an open in SLD editor option. And when you click that, it will open the SLD editor, which is a standalone application, but here it is opened directly on that layer. And from here, you can do some simple styling, but you could also right click on an attribute of your table and look at some statistics and decide that please generate for me a themed uh, style where you then can go through the rules and maybe change some colors or do some fancy stuff. And this is then supported in Smash also. Uh, tile sets. This was vectors. Now about tile sets, you can in the same uh, geo, DB viewer, you right click on the on the geo package and you can say, okay, import a raster map to tile set. So it will, you can load the geo diff, it will cut it into pieces and create a tile set layer for geo package. And if you have uh, shape files that are too uh, styled in a very advanced way, which is not supported by Smash, you can still decide to import vector to tile set, which means that on desktop, it will properly interpret the whole styling and it will generate a tile set. It will rasterize it and generate a tile set, set from that, which is also quite cool. If you have very particular um, backgrounds you need to see out in the field. Uh, last but not least, there are, if there are no GIS users, because many times surveyors are not GIS users, and you want to look at your data uh, very quickly, the DB viewer contains a couple of tools to have a look at geometries, time series, or images. As you can see here, you can right click on a geometry, see the geometry with the direction hint. You can select pieces and just ask to chart. It's very, very simple tools to quickly have a look at stuff. And last but not least, uh, there are forms. We said uh, we can now apply forms to uh, geo packages and post GIS tables. That's true. There was the G form, one of the whole machine modules you can run is called G form, and it was G to create geo paparazzi forms. Now you can right click there, open the form on a table. And what will happen, it will prepare, load a form if it's already there, or just prepare the field. That means you can create a section and the sections just so you know are the buttons inside of Smash that you click at to do one survey. Then there are the tabs and you can just add text boxes or whatever widgets you need. And instead of having to add a key, a unique key to each widget, here, you will be just prompted to select between the, uh, the attributes of your table. So automatically that widget gets linked to a particular attribute and Smash knows where to save the stuff. Uh, this has been around for ages, so not much time. GeoPaparazzi Converter, this helps you to take your survey database, load it there, and this converts your survey database into uh, GIS data. Even if nowadays uh, Smash itself has an export uh, option to export to, um, uh, to GeoPackage. So um, th that is already GIS data. Okay, a couple of last slides here uh, about contribution and external uses. Uh, one very cool project that I've seen uh, is the one developed by the GeoRepublic folks. They developed a location-based based task manager, and that's quite cool because they created a plugin for Smash, a plugin for Redmine. Redmine is one of the most famous issue tracker. And if you use those plugins, you are able to authenticate from, from Smash with the Redmine account, 
And at that point, you can upload mobile nodes as issues. So you're creating geo issues. And that's actually very, very useful for administrations that want to keep track of a workflow of things that do not work. Because once you have the geo issue, you can then work on it and change the status of the issue. So have a look. It's an open source project and it, you can find it at that link on GitHub. And then there is the Open GIS, UN Open GIS initiative, uh, Smash and the GSS stack has been one of the several mobile open source solutions that has been tested. Uh, I'm not talking about it now. There is a talk about it tomorrow. And uh, so don't miss it. If you're interested, uh, Open GIS initiative, use cases of open mobile GIS solutions in the context of UN peace operations. Last but not least, we have our first uh, app based on uh, Smash, and it's the Camino di Assisi app. It's the official app about the pilgrimage of Assisi, and it's based on Smash. So it uses in the background the whole Smash libraries. It's an application that uh, helps the pilgrimer uh, to walk through the different uh, parts of the whole walk. It's something that takes 12 days. You should have a look at it if you are uh, interested in tracks and it, you can, as you can see, it's the profile view from Smash where you can just look around uh, the where, how the trail looks like and you have information on where you can stay, where what you can visit and so on. Okay, I think I've been kind of in the, in the time. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I'll leave you a couple of useful links and colors that are apparently difficult to read, but it's the Smash manual, the sources, the source code of Smash, the source code uh, location of the server. And if you have questions that you can't ask me now, uh, you should just head to the mailing list and shoot away. Thank you very much. I think Andrea, that was indeed fast and insightful. But you know, with the, with this big pandemic break, you know, a lot of things have happened. Um, so let me check if we have any questions in the venue list. Uh, let's see, people are saying hello to you. <laughs> hello, hi. I can see you, but I I would like to know who you are. <laughs> I'm sure I know some of you. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Um, so I see no questions, but I have one. Uh, I am a macOS user, so I can I use Smash on my platform? On if you've mentioned at the beginning and I didn't see it, I apologize. But uh, can I use it? <laughs> uh, yes, you mean on iOS or your iOS? Computer? Yes, on iOS. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's an, actually a nice question because it lets me tell something that I didn't. Um, uh, it works on iOS. Actually, it was the reason we started Smash because we wanted to see if we were able to do something for iOS. And it worked very well and it attracted a user base we didn't think was so, so big. But there is something more with the current platform we are developing with, uh, Smash with. Um, we can also create a desktop application. So I didn't release it yet, but I'm currently using on my macOS also, not just iOS, but on macOS also a Smash version. That's very handy because I can open their uh, projects and, and modify notes and stuff. And I'm just waiting to release it when uh, I have a working version for macOS and Linux, but I don't have one yet for Windows. So I think it makes sense to release a desktop version when everything will come together. Okay, thank you. That's that's uh, that's very good. I, I uh, apparently we have some questions in the question tab, but for some reason I cannot see them. So let's see. Okay, any plan to make Smash available via F-Droid? Uh, yes, I have been talking to several people. Uh, I'm in that, I have to admit, I'm looking for help in the sense that I have been investigating uh, because 
all the projects that Smash depends on uh, are F-Droid compatible, and it also works without Google services, so it should really be ready for that. But I didn't, I wasn't able to figure out yet how to make Flutter projects, uh, which is the language it's developed in, uh, work inside of uh, F-Droid. There is one guy that tries something and it seemed to work, but it's it's a lot of work and I wasn't able to, to do that. So if someone of you is F-Droid expert and is able to help me, please get in touch with me because I would be very, very um, interested in getting Smash into F-Droid, definitely. Mm -hmm. So an open, an open invitation. And the second question, any connections with QGIS or other open source desktop GIS? Uh, it is, I think, two weeks now that I uh, subscribed to the QGIS developers list because I wanted to uh, support QGIS projects uh, to be able to open QGIS projects in Smash. And but uh, the thing is, I have to uh, to create the reader of those projects. So I entered the, the developers list and asked there if there are specifications of the QGIS projects that I can follow in order to understand what I'm reading. And the problem is the answer was that there is no specification and uh, things happen as they happen and they are not even backward compatible. So I figured it would be a running after uh, this and without the funding, uh, it's really not possible for me to, to just try and then maybe with the next version, it doesn't work and, and continue to run after. Uh, yes, that's it. Okay, so thank you very much. I think we have no more questions. So uh, an open invitation from Andrea <laughs> for F Droid. Uh, so and um, for QGIS yes, also. And it's for QGIS also. No, no, absolutely, because I, I'm looking for help on this. Also, if somebody is keen on giving some because I'm not very used to QGIS. I use it, but I'm not an advanced user. So if some advanced user is really interested in supporting QGIS project in Smash, also please get in touch. I, If you help me, I will develop the, the pieces, definitely. That's great. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, so Andrea, thank you very much for your presentation, kind answers and your time. Uh, we still have three more minutes uh, until uh, we introduce the next speaker. So uh, if I see no more questions and I see no more questions, then, um, well, you can add a bit more <laughs> <laughs> with the two it. remaining <laughs> minutes. If I knew it, I wouldn't have run that much. <laughs> Uh, no, may maybe a word about spatial light because uh, I know many people uh, use spatial light. Uh, the, the thing about spatial light is the project was kind of blocked for, for a while and it was very difficult to compile it. We also tried to bring it, Geo Paparazzi kind of failed to, to go on F Droid because the, we were never able to do the compilation chain of spatial light on F Droid. And uh, we, on mobile anyways, we were really exploiting 1% of spatial light. So uh, in the end, it as sad as it was, because I know the author personally, and I am in touch with him, and he wrote me an email about that. And I'm really afraid to answer him, because he said, did you stop supporting spatial light? And I was like, okay, so I, I'm waiting after Phosphor G to, to just offer him <laughs> something. But yeah, that's maybe the thing about spatial light that people would okay. like to support. Okay, that's that's perfect. Thanks. You know, you know, I, and Gisla had a better idea. She said you could have sang something in the two minutes. So I'm sorry I didn't think about that <laughs> myself because I remember in Phosphor G 2016 in Bonn that was <laughs> that was a nice performance. Yes. Okay. I, <laughs> 
Okay, I have a guitar here. Wait a second. Oh, oh my God. no, there's no more time. Sorry. There's no more time. I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> next time, Andrea. Next time. Thank you very, very much. And enjoy Phosphor G. Yes, thank you very much to everyone that came here. And thank you, Katrina, for the